Riley's Dad Rocks says, I have a question. When I apply a fade or another transition between clips on the timeline, it's fine. But when rendered in the final video, the second clip will freeze. So, yeah, so Riley's Dad Rocks. I think that is a unfortunate but a well-known glitch or whatever you want to call it with power director. It's like a split second. That freeze is not a long freeze. It's kind of like as it transitions, the first clip kind of stays there for a second or two instead of continuing to play the video. Now, that's a question that you probably have to ask to uh, Cyberlink because I've known about that for years. It's done it for years. I don't know why they chose to uh, execute on their transitions that way. It can be irritating to some people. Um, I guess I just probably got used to it and it's not a big deal to me, but I can definitely understand how others don't like that um, execution of the transition. So Wendon Big says, uh, Power Director University, I can't seem to find D. Hayes tool on Power Director itself. I can only find it in color director. Does power director have this option? Uh, no, it does not have the option to dehaze. A lot of the things that you might find in um, color director or audio director, uh, those programs, they're not gonna be part of power director. Some of them are now, like uh, they added things like the windy noise. They added things like the, um, capability to do auto remix so you can change the uh the duration of a song some of that stuff was added but i don't think they're going to cannibalize their own products by adding too much of those tools that are in color director and audio director uh and photo director adding those things to power director you know it's probably more of a cannibalization of their other tools so they're probably not going to do too much of that um even though they do do some of that from time to time cowboy steve also i seem to have issues with some videos producing clear and crisp do you have a video in your inventory of the best settings for producing videos for youtube yes i do my friend and basically it's this one here best youtube uh, render settings power director it's four years old, but these settings will still get you exactly what you need. There's not a big change uh, in the render settings that you need for uh, YouTube. Um, if you look at the video, there's also a link in the video description that actually leads you to the YouTube page with all of the recommended settings for uploading to YouTube to get the best uh, quality of video. My oh boy, Chris Lauterbach, thank you for joining us, Chris. Chris is my man from Facebook, my man, 50 Grand. He says, uh, been getting lots of ads from Topaz Video, AI. Did some Googling and read that PD has AI capabilities. Is PD AI capable of video enhanced like Topaz claims? I don't think so. Um, so the AI things that PowerDirector has, you, you're already aware of them, Chris. It's like the... Uh, the sky replacement tool and the, uh, the paint, uh, or cartooner designer or the wind noise removal or things like that. So that's the AI capabilities that, uh, power director has to name a few. Um, to my knowledge, they don't have any like video enhancement capabilities and I'm not like really big on the video enhancement. Now, to tell you the truth, like, I don't think that in a natural setting, you can't improve the quality of a video. Once you've made your video, that's the highest quality it's ever gonna get. Now, I have seen some of those commercials out there with like the Google Pixel and whatnot, where they're like, hey, if we got a blurry picture, we'll fix your blurry picture or we'll do this. That's, that's some AI magic right there. Now, fixing blurriness, is that the same thing as improving or enhancing the video quality? Eh, it's a fine line. I, I don't know about that. Um, so when I hear something like that, like 
Topaz can do video enhancement. I'm a little doubtful. UK Transparency says, hey, any ideas how to do a Ghost Rider effect in PD? Thanks in advance. So, yeah, I mean, I always got ideas on how to do different effects. Whether they're going to work or not, the first thing I try is a, a whole different thing. A lot of you guys don't know that usually when I make the effects that I do, um, it's a process of, you know, trying something, failing, and trying something different. Um, sometimes it just comes like that, and I just figure it out and do it. And then sometimes I'm like, man, how am I going to do that? Um, so just thinking through what you're saying, the, the first thing I would do is probably just get like a, uh, alpha transparency of fire, right? So basically if you can get you a MOV file of fire, that would be pretty easy to do. Just make sure that it's fitting the, I guess the look that you want it to have kind of like that ghost rider look, maybe a flame coming up around the head like that. Uh, then after that. I would probably think to try to do some type of filming, whereas I film myself or someone else in the same position, right? Um, with the tripod, just keep it still. Maybe have them just standing there looking at the camera or talking or whatever, and then do the same take again with that person with the same exact clothes on, same exact position but maybe with like a, a skull mask on that makes him look like Ghost Rider so that I could just kind of fade from one shot to the next, start off with the fire and then have it fade in. That would be my first thought on how to do it. Uh, depends on how complex you want to get. Of course, you have some limitations with Power Director and how complex you can get with things. Um, if needed, I would mask out anything that maybe got into the shot that didn't need to be there. It really depends on what you're trying to do and what resources that you have to create it. So just thinking off the top of my head, that would probably be the first thing that I would do to get it done. So Tell the Truth Friday says, can, you use my, can I use my mobile subscription on my computer? So... Your mobile subscription is just for mobile. It cannot be used for the PC version of PowerDirector. Same thing for the PC. If you get the PC subscription uh, for PowerDirector, you can't use that for the mobile subscription on your phone or your tablet or your Chromebook. There are two separate subscriptions, two separate products, two separate prices, those things are both standalone subscriptions. They, they do not combine the two, at least not yet. I don't know. I don't know anything that you guys don't know. I don't know that they're going to be combining them in the future. Uh, if they were to combine them in the future, I would think that they would probably do it like at a higher price. Like if you wanted to do PC and mobile, then they'd probably add maybe the price of mobile or maybe half the price of mobile to the subscription price and you get both. I don't think that that's something that they're going to do. Um, I think that they, they have a plan approach at their different types of customer bases. Um, when I look at like mobile versus PC, I see like, and I'm just making tutorials. So I don't know what Cyberlink knows, but from my estimation, there are two different demographics totally. Like I'm gonna tell you right now, my perception is the people who use the PC version, they don't want to have nothing to do with the mobile version. They think it's nothing. They think it's not worth it. They don't think that it's good. Yada, yada, yada. That's their opinion. I love them both. Right. Um, people who use the mobile version, they love the mobile version. They think I don't, they might not even have a PC. A lot of people who use the mobile version don't have a PC at all, or they don't want to sit in front of a PC and do all of that work. Um, they would rather just jump on their phone, take some video with their phone, boom, 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 do what they got to do, and they out. So it's two different types of customers. So I don't really see them combining the two. Um, because they don't want to cannibalize. Once again, they don't want to cannibalize their own uh, 
funds, their revenue that they're getting. I mean, if they don't have to, they're not going to. That's the way I see it. T. Williams says, do you think that the full PD suite is worth the extra cost considering that PD itself does most things? Depends on your needs. Um, once again, it depends on the individual and depends on their needs. So if the individual wants like, because there's options out there, keep it in mind. Someone might tell you, Hey, I think power director isn't worth it because I have iMovie on my Mac and I just need that for making my videos. Well, that's for that person. That person doesn't need anything else but iMovie. And guess what? They might have a free photo editing app. They may have a free audio app like Audacity. They may have uh, a free color correction app like DaVinci Resolve. There's free stuff out there for everything. <laughs> Let's not get it twisted. You can do just about everything for free. You don't need power director. You don't need Photoshop. You don't, you can use GIMP. You can use uh, paint.net. You there's free. There's, there's a free thing for everything. So let's get that out there first. That's my first perspective. When I think about that, when I think about is the PD suite worth it because PD does more things. I'm like, PD does a lot of things. doesn't do everything. You might need a, a photo editor uh, for certain things. You might need a color director for certain things or resolve. So the thing that makes the suite worth it in my mind is, first of all, if you don't have any type of photo editor, audio editor, or color editor, if you don't have any of those and you want something that's integrated into power director. So you just click a button and you could jump out, do some color correction, click another button and you're right back in power director. If you want something that gives you that integration, that seamlessness between the two programs and you're willing to pay for that, then yeah, I think it's worth it. Um, now if you're an individual that's like, I can try to do everything I need to do a power director. And you think that, there's nothing you need outside of power director, then yeah, there's no need for you to get those things, but that's an individual like choice. It's not something, it's not a one size fits all. I will always tell you there's no one size fits all for everything. If there was, there would be one editor and no other editors out there, but there are thousands of them, right? There's a bunch of free photo editors. There's a bunch of, uh, free audio tools. There's all kinds of stuff out there. So, they're trying to look for the, uh, they're trying to look for what individuals prefer and they're trying to give them those things, whether it's a paid product or it's a free one. So when you ask me, is the suite worth it? Depends on the individual. Ian Boyle harmonica. What's up Ian it says, uh, could you explain what the render preview feature is for please? Yes, I can. So the render preview is basically just that you're rendering the video so that you can preview it smoothly. So based on your PC, you may not be able to see like a smooth preview when you play something. So when you play something in the preview window, it may be jumpy, right? Or it may need to catch up to the audio or it may lag is what most people call it. So if you're experiencing lag and like you want to see something, then you might do a render preview. Now for me, I do render previews if there is something like a uh, processor intense. So let's say I added like one of those new AI effects to a video. When I play that, it might not play smoothly and I can't see the effect. I'm like, man, I can't even see what this effect is doing to the video because it's lagging or it's jumping over or whatever it's doing, it's jumpy. So I might say, okay, I'm gonna render this section of the timeline. I'm gonna do a render preview. And so now when I preview that effect that I put on there, it'll play smoothly because I went ahead and rendered that part of the video. So that's the render preview. 
Heterogeneity Rocks says, Hey, got a question. I have a subscription to Power Director 365. If I don't renew, do I get to keep the version but not the Shutterstock, etc.? No, you don't. Um, basically, if you have Power Director 365, then what you're doing is you're not owning the program, you're renting it. So as soon as you go ahead and uh, end your subscription, then you won't have the program anymore. It'll still be there, but you won't be able to use it, right? Um, as soon as they go ahead and check your subscription through online, because like you have to go online like every so often for them to verify your subscription for you to keep using it. Um, and if you go online one time and you use it and they can't verify it, you're not going to be able to use it anymore. So the answer to that is no, you're not going to keep now the Shutterstock stuff. Uh, once again, just like I said in my last video, you're not supposed to access the Shutterstock, um, assets outside of power director. So there's that too.